Again, showing off, loose in the upstairs, and head turned a little too far. Again, a little smiles, a little bigger, a little bigger, ladies. And we'll take a look at that. Looking good. Flirt with my hand, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I make my income from photography. Vernacular is old time photos, and what I do is I dress people in period costumes. I'm a photographer and a geographer and a naturalist, lots of things. Sniffing trees looks pretty weird. I had a remarkable wife, she was an English woman, and uh, passed away, but we had just a ton of fun together. And I've been fortunate that way. We were together 25 years and it was just, I mean, the way I felt was somebody had cut off my Siamese twin. I'd be watching TV and I'd turn, well, Joyce isn't there. And I was just drinking too much and feeling sorry for myself. So I called this, this actor who lives up on the hill here, mountain, Val. It's because of this guy. He's the one that said, if you see this every day, you'll be fine. Thanks. <laughs> and he finagled a bagel and got my place in the campground, and here we are. It's, it's like living in an airplane. And uh, I sometimes just spend hours just looking at the view, just when the clouds are going by. No, I thought about living up in Oregon with my daughter. And uh, after the first week, I missed the heck out of this place. Figaro Mountain, that's, a, we, that's how we all up here relate to it. I live inside the National Forest, Los Padres National Forest, about 3,200 feet in elevation, in an oak manzanita pine forest, where as you can see, you can see forever. On a clear day, you can see the ocean out there. That's where I live. Makes you wonder who lives in there. Somebody does. And in my very, very young years, uh, just wandered around the woods by myself, uh, having a ton of fun uh, for that year before I got into school. And I think that made me really appreciate nature and the woods and all that kind of stuff. I applied to the University of Oregon to work on a PhD in, in my field geography and went there and was doing well. So I took a course in photo criticism and had a remarkable professor who used to bring famous photographers in uh, to these seminars. And one night, this fellow Brett Weston, who's renowned, came and he brought some tequila and we were all drinking tequila. And this old guy who was in his late 70s came over and said, hey kid, what's this effing geography stuff? You should be an effing photographer. And uh, that's all I needed. I'd always wanted to be a photographer. I didn't have the courage to just cut my bridges and do it. And I've been a photographer ever since, having a ton of fun. except a place to go to work. So when I came 30 years ago, the main commercial part of town was only two blocks long. Now it's what, six, seven blocks? Uh, much, much smaller. Uh, we never used to get world tourists, but it's gotten that much bigger and publicity and we're like Disneyland. Did you get some pictures of my 
my serious stuff. This is why I do the old time photos, so that I can have time to do that. This is the least exciting part of my job, costuming. You know, I go down there, I literally do a song and dance. Or the feather show. You know what this is good for? Babies. They just are mesmerized by that. And dogs. I have the fun of being a producer, costumer, I don't like that part, and then the director. And, uh, but that's not really who I am. But collecting rocks and checking out the weather and walking through the woods, that's, and making pictures. And landscapes is really what I like. I had a show years ago that I didn't even go to. You know, the artist is supposed to be there for the opening. I was too embarrassed. Because uh, it's sort of like real personal and I was thinking back then, well, what if somebody says they stink and this and that, you know? Thanksgiving Day, on Figueroa. I I'm gonna have my shop till I drop. That's my income. I don't mean drop dead. I mean, I'm so lame I can't do it anymore. I'm seeing part of it because I do a lot of work with my hands, those pins and buttons and stuff, and they just don't have the coordination they used to. When I first got into it, it was a new item, totally popular. Uh, but once you've had one old-time photo, you don't need another one. Financially, I'm a failure. But I've had this philosophy, keep the faith, and it's worked. No, I don't have a 401k and all that kind of stuff you're supposed to have. And I found it also, as far as the income thing, when I first got into the old-time photos, it was like pet rocks, and we were making money. Yeah, that's what I want. A 44-inch printer. It's only six grand. So during the period when I did need money for children and raising and all that, it worked out well. Not this year. Now that it's not popular, no big deal. So usually once a week, we sit out here and watch the sunset and solve the world's problems. In my opinion, I live well. Yeah, it's ironic, I have probably what appears to many as the poorest house in the valley, but the best view of the all. No matter when, when the sun goes down here, I'll take it. <laughs> Want to die here? I mean, there's no place I would rather be. But I see my life now, now that I've gone through it, as not ups and downs, but just lots of adventures. And I guess my philosophy is this incredible planet was put here for one reason, in my opinion, to be enjoyed. And that's why sitting in an office with no windows and doing something I don't like to do. And I never made any money. Uh, but I've always had this philosophy, you really don't need it. If you just take care of your basics, everything will... And your basics are what you truly believe in. And it's worked out that way. I have one simple motto, and it came out of that civil rights movement, actually. And I used to use it with my children when they couldn't live with me and they really wanted to. I'd say, just keep the faith, because it's going to happen. Just keep the faith. And I always keep the faith. 